Let's revise economic geography. In this revision movie, we'll be learning about primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary activities, the percentage of people employed in economic sectors in MEDCs and LEDCs, factors affecting industrial location, looking at case studies of Toyota in Bernstein, the UK, and Kenya flower production in Lake Naivasha in Kenya. Also, how technology affects the location of industries, things like the internet, and hopefully this will help you revise your for your common entrance exam and it will also help you for your GCSEs. Enjoy! A country with a successful economy has amongst other things a large proportion of its population in employment and the range of jobs available is wide within a great number of economic activities. These economic activities are classified into four categories according to their stage in the process of production. Now, this is an example, well, this is about primary activities. Now, primary workers extract, collect, and grow raw materials. The raw materials can be sold as they are, or processed to make something else. Primary activities may include mining. Miners extract ores from the ground, and the ores are the raw materials. Oil can also be extracted from the seabed by oil rigs. Now, fishing. Fishermen catch fish to sell so that they can be cooked or eaten raw. In this situation, the fish act as the raw materials. Forestry. Lumberjacks cut down trees and sell them so that they can be processed into things like furniture, tables. Now, farming. Farmers harvest crops so that they can be sold in many different ways. So a quick recap, we have primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary activities. This revision clip was about primary activities, extracting raw materials. This revision clip is about secondary economic activities. Secondary workers process raw materials. This means that they're changed into something different. For example, oil is refined to make petrol. Fish is processed to make fish fingers. Secondary workers also manufacture things. This includes making ships and cars. The number of people working in the secondary sector has decreased from 50% in the 1900s to 27% in 2000. Some job examples include builders, factory workers and engineers. So a quick summary, secondary economic activities involve people making things. In this revision clip we'll be learning about tertiary economic activities. Tertiary workers provide people and other companies with services. Tertiary jobs include working in shops, schools, offices, hospitals, transport, leisure and tourism. This pie chart shows that 80% of the UK working population is employed in the tertiary sector. Tertiary activities provide a service with the products from the secondary activities. Examples of tertiary jobs include a doctor, a teacher and a Navy officer. So in summary, tertiary activities involve services. In this revision clip, we'll be learning about quaternary economic activities. The quaternary sector consists of industries providing research in science and technology. Two examples of a quaternary job is an ICT consultant and a research scientist. An ICT consultant helps businesses on how best to use information technology. The research scientist will try to make things faster, safer, cheaper and more efficient. 2% of the people in the UK work in the quaternary industry. This revision clip is about the percentage of people who work in each sector in MEDCs and LEDCs. It's easy to spot whether a country is an MEDC, a more economically developed country, or an LEDC, a less economically developed country, by looking at the proportion of its population in each sector. As you can see, in MEDCs, for example, France, the UK, USA and Germany, there is a high proportion in the tertiary sector, with smaller proportions of the primary and secondary. You will find a small amount of quaternary, which you will not find in any LEDCs. In LEDCs, for example, Brazil, Kenya, India and Mali, there is a high proportion of the population in primary sector, with a smaller percentage in the secondary and tertiary sectors.
You'll find no cautionary in LEDCs. This revision clip is about industrial location, focusing on the Japanese car manufacturing company, Toyota, who located their factory in a place called Berniston in the UK. So why did they cho choose Berniston? They Toyota chose to build their factory in Berniston because it's built on flat land with room to expand. The land is cheap compared to places, other places in the UK. It's, n it's close to a good skilled workforce in Derby. Um, it's got good motorway and railway links. It's close to an airport to export cars and near to a port. It's near to other car makers so there's more skilled labour. Close to Europe to sell cars to other countries. It's close to suppliers and other car shops. Berniston is centrally located in the UK so it's easy to get to. The UK government made it clear they wanted Toyota to build their new factory in the UK and would give it any help they could. The UK is a large market for new cars and it is in the centre of Europe. So Toyota located their factory in Berniston in the UK. So what benefits did it bring to the area? 2,850 people in Derby were employed. There was well-paid work and private health care provided. The pension provided for workers, life insurance provided for workers and cheap cars provided for workers. They were given free work clothes and had accessibility to subsidiary restaurants. Workplace nurse, there was a workplace nursery for children of workers and other companies were encouraged to locate in the same area. Other transnational companies are now likely to locate in the UK. Britain has a large market for cars which is beneficial for a car factory to be built in the UK. So, we've had a few advantages of Toyota being in the Berniston area. Here are a few disadvantages. Um, Toyota is a greenfield site, so the countryside is being destroyed by them building there. Um, there's an increase in traffic and noise in the area. Uh, Toyota cars are selling well. Decre there might be a decrease in other car sales. And um, new jobs in Derby means that there are less jobs elsewhere. Toyota is a Japanese company. It's possible that the UK workers are being doing the lower jobs and just putting the cars together and the higher jobs are just being given to the Japanese. Another case study of industrial location is flower production in Kenya on a, on a lake called Lake Naivasha. It's a bit, Kenya is a good place to grow flowers because there are, is a warm climate that is perfect for growing flowers. There are fertile volcanic soils and plenty of free water to irrigate the flowers from Lake Naivasha. There is flat land with room to expand and cheap and plentiful labour. It's also close to an airport to export the flowers. There are good road links from Novasha to Nairobi. There are many advantages that flower growing brings to the area. Employment. About 300 growers employ an estimated 100,000 people with about 1.2 million people deriving their livelihood from the flower export industry. There's free education for workers' children at company schools. Basic healthcare benefits for the workers. Flowers are exported to Europe, earning Kenya. In the agricultural sector, floriculture in Kenya is the second foreign exchange earner after tea, bringing in more than $250 million per year and employing 100,000 people directly and more than 1.5 million indirectly. However, there are also a few disadvantages of flower production in Kenya. Lake Navasha is running out of water because the industry is extracting too much. The lake is becoming polluted by the wastewater from the flower industry that contains pesticides. Too many people have gone to Navasha to find employment and many are unemployed. Crime rates have increased. The industry is heavily dependent on the European market. If, if people in Europe stop buying so many roses and flowers, many people in Kenya will lose their jobs. Land that could not be used for food production is being used for flower production. Many people in Kenya do not have enough food to eat. Thank you for watching. Another case study of industrial location is flower production in Kenya 
on a, on a lake called Lake Naivasha. It's a bit... Kenya is a good place to grow flowers because there is a warm climate that is perfect for growing flowers. There are fertile volcanic soils and plenty of free water to irrigate the flowers from Lake Navasha. There is flat land with room to expand and cheap and plentiful labour. It's also close to an airport to export the flowers. There are good road links from Navasha to Nairobi. There are many advantages that flower growing brings to the area. Employment. About 300 growers employ an estimated 100,000 people, with about 1.2 million people deriving their livelihood from the flower export industry. There's free education for workers' children at company schools. Basic healthcare benefits for the workers. Flowers are exported to Europe, earning Kenya. In the agricultural sector, Floriculture in Kenya is the second foreign exchange earner after tea, bringing in more than $250 million per year and employing 100,000 people directly and more than 1.5 million indirectly. However, there are also a few disadvantages of flower production in Kenya. Lake Navasha is running out of water because the industry is extracting too much. The lake is becoming polluted by the wastewater from the flower industry that contains pesticides. Too many people have gone to Navasha to find employment, and many are unemployed. Crime rates have increased. The industry is heavily dependent on the European market. If, if people in Europe stop buying so many roses and flowers, many people in Kenya will lose their jobs. Land that could not be used for food production is being used for flower production. Many people in Kenya do not have enough food to eat. Thank you for watching. This revision clip is about what effect technology has had on the location of industries. Technology has had a larger effect on industry more and more recently. Some industries are called footloose industries. This means they can go where they like, for example, computing industries. Technology means industries can move where they want to. Call centres are set up where technology is easily accessible and is cheap. For example, India. However, this means they have to base where technology is easily accessible. Technology affects industry because they do not have to employ people anymore because machines can do so much of the work needed in today's society. The internet is also a core part of affecting industry, especially in the research category. Thank you for listening to this revision clip on how technology affects industry. Good luck with your revision. The best thing to do now is to watch the revision movie again and take a few of your own notes. I hope this helps you get your well-deserved A-star in geography.